I'm here today at uh, Savoy Mountain State Forest in uh, Western Massachusetts, kind of on in part of it's in Florida, Massachusetts, and some of it's in Savoy, Massachusetts. But we're at the campground today, and it's mostly in Florida. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the campground. It's kind of, kind of soggy today, so <laughs> it's gonna be kind of a quick tour. But it's be raining at the moment. But we'll give you a quick look around what the campground is like and. Uh, See what this place is. It's one of my favorite campgrounds, though. It's 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 still in Massachusetts, but it's just off the beaten path enough that so it's rather quiet here. So, kind of like this place. This is the main entrance to the campground itself. Actually, up on. Uh... Okay. So, answer what uh, what town you're in here. It's right on the line. <laughs> the Savoy, Florida town line. But anyway, this is the main entrance to the campground. Get your ranger station right there. You park in this parking lot on this side. Yeah. You check in there. You can buy your firewood there. Seven dollars a bundle. You do have to pay by credit card. In the middle of the field, there's two bathhouses. And as you come in there, there's a little dead end side spur that leads to a few smaller campsites. So if you want to get off the main loop, but you still want a tent camping site or place to park a van, though these sites are a little on the small side. But this is sites 1, 2, and 3 up here. You hard pressed to get your van level in that spot, but it's good for a small tent. Yeah. Same with the other two sites down here. This actually is the uh, path the power lines come into the uh, campground up. So it was cut open for that, and they just stuck some campsites down here. Nice quiet little campsite though. A little close to the road, but the road doesn't get much traffic. Well, you might be able to level off a van in that site, uh, okay. Yeah, you could. You'll pull it in and level off there. Well, site 2 is actually pretty good. Site 1. Doesn't look like much, uh, <laughs> much level space over here, so good again, good for a small tent, so. A couple, uh, couple sites good for tents. One site would be uh, okay for a uh, for a small van. So if you wanted to bring a camper van up there, you could probably level it off nicely in that spot. But they're much better sites for vans <laughs> than these ones. Okay, you're back on the main road. You get back up to site number four. And a quiet little site there. That's actually a site right there. I'm not sure the number on it, but. Great if you need uh, solar power, and a lot of it. <laughs> Not much of it for privacy. Yeah, water spigots all over the park, and I think it's kind of cute how they put little uh, solar powered lights on top of them. So you can find them at night. And that's site 5 over here, that's not a bad little site. Some occupied sites up this way. Some more hilltop camping over there, the other bathhouse is there. Another site over here, number eight, and then up this road here is the road to the cabins. Yes, they have four cabins here. We reserved for pretty reasonable pricing. Not sure what that building is there, but this is the group site over here. And you got the cabin sites out this way. One of these days I'll do a video while I stay at one of these cabins, but it hasn't happened yet. But like I said, they have four cabins. They just installed a whole new bathhouse up here too. With the showers and everything. It used to be just a porta pot down here for the cabins. Let's see nobody there right now, okay. This is cabin number four. Nice cabins, they got wood stoves in them and everything. And electricity. So I do look forward to staying in one of them someday. I keep hoping they open them up for winter again. And like a lot of these properties here, yes, these cabins were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. If you want to read the board, or you can pause this video here. Hey, interesting little picnic pavilion area. Hey, White Wolf. That's Brandon Porter Potts. <laughs> ah. This is not the new bathhouse. Hmm. Newly really rebuilt, that's for sure, but not the new bathhouse at all. Interesting. Got this old uh, 
Mickey map down here, huh? A lot of interesting places to explore around here. Be an old uh, storage building. Hmm. Told they built a new bathhouse here. This isn't it. <laughs> All right, let's continue down the road a bit more. Yep, it's cabin number two. And finally down here at the very end should be cabin number one. Let's see what else is down here. This is probably the best cabin to have because it's quite secluded down here. Yeah, I don't see any new bathhouse that it's supposed to have out here, but hey, whatever. <laughs> it's on the maps that way, and I was told they were building one, but apparently it's not done. It doesn't even look like it's been started. But yeah, that's cabin number one. All right, this is where we're going to stop and head back and go explore the uh, rest of the campground. Okay, back onto the uh, main loop again. You can see the uh, road gets a little bit narrower and a little bit rougher over in this section. But the uh, campsites along here are very wooded and well spaced. I'm a little bit close, but not too bad. This is campsite number 10. With a bird in it. And get more sights up in the field out here. Good, good area for larger campers or vans with solar panels if they need it. If I was here for more than one night. I'd need the a little bit more sun on the panel. Say 11. And the water spigot with a light on top. Site 16, and then we get onto Site 17, which is what I'm staying at. I'll give you a quick, quick look inside the site here. Uh, that was my van, Wolf Van Jack. Nice open space here. You just get the van fairly level over here. I got the fire pit. Picnic table, which is getting a little wet. All the sites come with these uh, beer boxes, so if you're tenting and you want to quicker access to your food, just sort in here, somehow, except this one seems to be jammed. <laughs> there it goes, okay. There we go, that's how you open it. There you go. Almost people-proof, too. Uh, you can store your food. There's this, I'm, I'm debating, I and mean, I'm only here for one night, so I'm debating how much stuff I'm actually going to pull out and set up, because whatever I pull out, it's going to be wet. <laughs> So the less stuff I pull out, the less wet stuff I have, so I may just stay in the van for the most part. Uh, the rain's supposed to stop a little, uh, about an hour or so from now, so hopefully I'll be able to pull my chair out at least and have some time at the fire later. Just have to be ready to throw the chair back in the, the van later. Okay, and down here you get uh, got the camper's beach down this way. I suspect nobody's here right now. Greeted with the signs as danger, unguarded water area. Sign back the road there said the swimming area is closed anyway, so it's not much of a beach. <laughs> but it's uh, here for access for the campers anyway. People might want to come out here and do some stuff around the water. There's two of these ponds. I believe they're just North Pond and South Pond. One of them has uh, just access from the campground here, like this one, and the other one's access from the road. There's actually a parking lot out there you can go out to and set up on, and a boat launch area. So if you want to bring a kayak and that, you can come out there. This one you could probably bring lug your kayak down that trail over there, but it <laughs> wouldn't be much fun. But You probably can't hear them in the microphone, but I can hear some frogs off in the distance, too. So, uh, Yeah, this is the uh, so-called camper's beach. <laughs> kind of soggy right now, so I'm going to head back in under the tree cover. But not a bad little area. Now over on the other side of the loop, you encounter some open field areas. Because you're also right alongside the road, so you can hear the traffic going down the road as it comes by. 
I'm one of the campsites in this spot. I'm actually not sure what the number is at the moment because I haven't spotted a number for it yet. Or you know uh, well maybe this is just a uh, designated picnic area because there's two picnic tables and a fire pit, but no number. Hmm. I'm not sure which it is actually. It may just be a picnic spot too. You know, these ones start having numbers again up this way. So that's what that is. That's just a picnic area. These sites are a little bit more in the open. So if you want a wooded site, but you want some light in your solar panel, these would be a good uh, good sites to pick. That's site number 27. You can get a van level in that spot just fine. 28, same thing. You can get a get it leveled off. Or do a tent. You got a nice uh, grassy area right next to it. You can set up a tent in too. And again, you got all the uh, field on this side. Some really nice dark skies up here too, if you're into uh, some astronomy type stuff. They'll just be forewarned, you want to get away from the bathhouses, because they do have outside lighting on them. I unfortunately will not be doing any uh, astrophotography stuff this visit, because it's raining out. <laughs> There's a lot of spigot in the other bathhouse. And this site's a nice little site here, site 29. Set back a little bit. There's a little... Uh, Shaded area. Terrible for solar panel, but otherwise a very nice site. I believe that fenced off area is part of the uh, septic system. <laughs> uh, okay, site number 30. Again, nice little site. Should get decent sun if the sun were actually out. Yeah, we got site 31 here. A little harder to get leveled off in. But I suppose if you pulled all the way down, you could do it. Let's say 32, and we could have them to more occupied areas again after this. Let's say 32 is a good size, though. You could stretch out your vehicle in this spot. Yeah, this campground also has a dumping station if you need it. And your tanks here. You got the uh, non potable water there, and you got the drinking water. Over here, which is temporarily out of service. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, Massachusetts. Anyway, not sure if I'd really want the uh, campsite right across the road from the dumping station. And we come back to the beginning again. Back to the entrance with the ranger station and uh, the field and cabins and all that stuff again. We're well, back at my site again. Site number 17. A nice little sight here, and the, though it's raining, it's not really penetrating the trees at all right now, so it's just light rain. So anyway, we're going to get in the van and uh, warm up for a bit here. This is just a quick little tour of uh, Savoy Mountain State Forest. Uh, a couple notes here, uh, cell phone service is actually not too bad here. Uh, you can get uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. They're all weak, but they all do function, so you can actually access all three. So, so if you need cell phone service while you travel, this is a good place. As I said, it's pet friendly, uh, good, has good sites for campers out in the field, plus good sites for tenters out in the woods, or vans. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a fun place. So, a lot of hiking trails around here. You have the ponds you can do kayaking in. So there's plenty of stuff to do here, plus you're not too far from North Adams, so you can uh, go down there and explore. If you're into museums, that's a great place for that. You get Mount Greylock right over there. So a lot of fun things to see and do around here. So anyway, if you got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And with that, uh, remember, slow down and enjoy life. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.